Tell me about the moment you fell in love with Carl Sagan. You said it was during the Voyager compilation. Yes, it was. It was on June 1st, 1977. I had been looking for some time for that piece of Chinese music that we could put on the Voyager record and not feel like idiots for having done so. And um, I was very excited because I'd finally found a ethnomusicologist composer at Columbia University who told me without a moment's hesitation that this piece, Flowing Streams, which was represented to me as one of the oldest pieces of, of Chinese music, 2,500 years old, was the piece we should put on the record. So I uh, called Carl, who was traveling. He was in Tucson, Arizona, giving a talk. And um, we had been alone many times during the making of the record and as friends for three years. And neither of us had ever uh, said anything to the other. We were both involved with other people. We'd had these wonderful, soaring conversations, but we had both been completely just professional about everything and his friends. And uh, he wasn't there, left a message. Hour later, phone rings, pick up the phone, and I hear this wonderful voice. And he said, I get back to my hotel room and I find this message and it says, Annie called. And I say to myself, why didn't you leave me this message 10 years ago? And my heart completely skipped a beat. I can still remember it so perfectly. And I said, for keeps? And he said, you mean get married? And I said, yes. And we had never kissed. We had never, you know, even had any kind of personal discussion before. We both hung up the phone, and I just screamed out loud. I remember it so well, because it was this great eureka moment. It was just like a scientific discovery. And then the phone rang, and I was thinking, oh, shit. You know, like, and uh, the phone rang, and it was Carl, and he said, I just want to make sure that really happened. We're getting married, right? And I said, yeah, we're getting married. He said, okay. Just wanted to make sure. And um, the spacecraft lifted off on August 20th. And August 22nd, we told everyone involved. And we were together from that moment until his death in 1996 in December. Wow. Talk about romantic. My it was God. so romantic. And part of my feeling about Voyager, obviously, and part of what I was feeling in the recording of my brain waves my heart, my eyes, everything, in that meditation on the record. I had asked Carl whether or not it would be possible to compress the impulses in one's brain and nervous system into sound and then put that sound on the record and then think that perhaps the extraterrestrials of the future would be able to reconstitute that data into thought. And he looked at me in beautiful May Day in New York City and said, well, you know, a thousand million years is a long time, you know, why don't you go do it? Uh, because who knows, you know, who knows what's possible in a thousand million years? And so um, my brainwaves and REM, every little sound that my body was making was recorded at Bellevue Hospital in New York. This was two days after Carl and I declared our love for each other. And so what I often think is that maybe a hundred million years from now, you know, somebody flags that record down. And I always wonder, because part of what I was thinking in this meditation was about the wonder of love and of being in love and to know it's on those two spacecraft. Even now, in my, whenever I'm down, you know, I'm thinking, and still they move. 35,000 miles an hour, leaving our solar system for the great wide open sea of interstellar space. Billions of years from now, the sun will have reduced this planet to a charred, ashy ball. But that record with androids, brainwaves, and heartbeat on it will still be out there somewhere intact in some remote region of the Milky Way preserving a murmur of an ancient civilization that once flourished on a distant planet.